Hey everyone, it's Alexander, the real Mr. Robinson here. Welcome to the channel and welcome to another week of Godzilla Watch Alongs. Today we are doing 1993's Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. First of all, um, first of all, I want to say welcome to everyone who is in the chat or lurking in the background. I know some of you are watching without actually participating in the chat, which I, which I, again, I highly encourage you to check out to just interact with everyone else. Uh, second order of business, where am I? Well, I am currently, um, I'm currently house sitting for a couple friends who are out of town. It's gonna be all week. Spiders Prime says, I can't see you. Uh, that is the intention because I am not at my place uh, this week. I'm going to, I decided to not use my video camera, webcam for, just for uh, consideration of their privacy, just, I don't, I'm sure they don't want the, um, I'm sure they don't want their place, like, being recorded at all, but don't worry, uh, it's important that I have the audio only, and I just want to make sure you all can hear me, because at the moment, that is what's more important than being able to see me, which I should tell you right now, the watch along for Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla is going to be the same deal, but with Godzilla vs. Destroya. I will be back uh, with a with webcam in hand, so you can see my ugly mug as I do these watch alongs. So, so uh, again, just want to just do a brief check to see if you all can hear me. Um, Justin Toner says, "Alex can can hear you great, awesome." Razorbike says, "I can completely understand that. We can hear you, awesome." So I think we are good to go. If they can hear me, I'm, I'm going to assume you all can hear me. And so we can just start the movie. And uh, for those of you who have been joining along, whether you are a familiar fan or you're somebody who's actually watching these for the very first time because of this watch along, if you were let down that the last movie uh, made Godzilla an afterthought, well, I'm pleased to say that this movie is not only nothing but Godzilla, but this is the movie in which Godzilla has appeared on screen the longest for 26 minutes. And in Invasion of the Astro Monster, that is the shortest he's ever been on screen for six minutes. So yeah, this movie is unapologetically Godzilla obsessed. And uh, without further ado, I think everyone's set to go. I'm going to push the play button right now. We're opening up with that TriStar logo. And that flying horse. And I... Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember what movie I saw, like, recently that had the, like, an updated TriStar logo, but I kind of miss how they use, like, what looks to be a real horse. This intro is pretty cool. Like, right away, it gives you the origin of this specific Mechagodzilla, and uh, they pretty much salvaged Mecha King Ghidorah's remains. Again, um... What was I going to say? Yeah, nice way for this series to keep in continuity with each other. And also, this is also the first movie in the series that introduces G-Force. Japan's Counter G-Bureau. Uh, Garuda. So, my question is, what happened to the other two heads? Like, did the other two heads continue to survive underwater, or did they just die?
Yeah, Mechagodzilla's design here is pretty cool. Although, for me, I'm more of a Kiryu guy. This theme is so cool. And that's one other thing I like about this movie is that this is the movie where, like, a majority of the themes in this movie are... Or it, maybe not a majority, but a lot of the new themes in this movie are incredibly iconic. And also, Ifakube managed to create a new Mechagodzilla theme that actually sounds heroic this time, considering that... I don't want to call Godzilla the bad guy here, uh, but Mechagodzilla is definitely more of a protector to Japan. Another reason I actually prefer Kiryu over uh, this Mechagodzilla is because I like how that movie... We'll get into it when we get into it, but a lot of that movie's, like, science, and I'm using quote fingers, is um, based around... Like, like, it sounds somewhat plausible, whereas this one, it's just like, oh, we gathered the most brilliant minds in the world, and uh, Mechagodzilla, sure. Also, this movie is not written by um, Kazuki... Wait, wait, no, that... I want to make sure I... Uh, hold on a second, folks. Okay, yeah, this movie here is not written... Unlike the last three, is not written by Kazuki Omore... Which means you won't be able to see any blatant ripoffs of American films. It's funny that Sup that uh, Super X Two had that technology as well, and that was actually a detriment to that uh, weapon. Razorback says Godzilla is definitely the antagonist here. I mean, not really. Like he he attacks he attacks the mainland Japan, but it's for like a legit reason that you really can't you really can't call him the villain this time. Like the last few movies that uh, he was definitely the villain and had some events in this movie not gone through, Godzilla probably would have been minding his own business. You know, I find it so funny that, um, <clears throat> I find it so funny that, uh, Garuda is just introduced in this movie and all of a sudden it's just junk. It's like, we never saw it in action. You know, if I got a letter, um, uh, saying to report to G-Force, I think it would be pretty cool. Yeah, he's not a good guy either, but he's definitely... I wouldn't say he's the villain in this movie. That's a little bit of foreshadowing right there. <clears throat> you know, I don't think if, if I was in charge of the Mechagodzilla program, I wouldn't give a crap uh, if um, if one of my pilots was 
a Pteranodon nerd. Also, they're fighting... They're sitting in a cockpit controlling a giant robot. Uh, unless Mechagodzilla was controlled via, like, motion capture technology, uh, I don't think karate is entirely necessary. Oh, yeah, this movie has a lot of these Japanese actors speaking English. And it's... It's kind of awkward. Okay, that's not fair. Like, you just pit a white belt against a black belt? Like, of course... Of course the white belt's gonna get his ass whooped. Wow, those are some sporadic laser cannons. They almost look like gravity beams more than actual laser cannons. So that's what the Mechagodzilla training is. Like, not... <laughs> Meanwhile, A giant mysterious pteranodon. So, okay, we have a main character that is obsessed with pteranodons. Then we have these characters travel to an island where there is a pteranodon skeleton. Hmm. And there's two eggs on this island. One of them is mysteriously hatched. That's some... Big foreshadowing right there. Crack. That would have been so sad if the that egg cracked. We all know who that is. So I love how these characters like get a sense of like they feel this big gust come in. They look around kind of like wondering what happened. They're paying attention to the egg glowing. And then they notice a giant pteranodon. I'm sorry, not just a pteranodon, but Rodan. It's a shame that Rodan isn't portrayed by a suit actor in this movie. It's just a pure puppet. But whatever, Rodan, Rodan, Rodan it's Rodan regardless.
One thing that really bugs me about the dub of this movie is that throughout the entire movie, they call Rodan Radon. And I'm like, y'all have access to other Godzilla movies that Rodan's been featured in, right? Like, it's inexcusable that through this whole dub, they refer to Rodan as Rodan or Radon. Here comes Godzilla again. <laughs> Some people in the chat have pointed this out. Um, like how Rodan just was suddenly named at the snap of a finger. But also, I think most fans know this, but Rodan is significantly smaller than Godzilla in this movie. Uh, and because this Godzilla is supposed to be bigger than the Showa era Godzilla, I think that means that this Rodan is regular sized. As in, like, if, if Godzilla was the size of his Showa counterpart in this series, uh, he'd be the same size as Rodan. And so because there's no suit actor, um, Rodan just sort of irritates Godzilla by pecking him constantly. You know, that shot where Rodan trips Godzilla, since he kind of falls into his tail, I always expect, like, there would be a one movie where, Rod like, Godzilla uses his tail for balance and then um, just gets back on his feet without ever falling over. <laughs> Godzilla just slapped Rodan in the face right there. So that, that's one thing I don't like about Rodan in this series is that he's just... I don't like how he's smaller than all the other monsters. Like King Ghidorah, Rod Mothra, and Mechagodzilla all got increased in their size, but why did Rodan have to be left unchained? Well, in terms of his size. Because Rodan obviously looks very different compared to uh, his Showa counterpart. That would have been too easy. And that happened. Can you imagine watching this movie for the first time, excited to see Rodan, and then all of a sudden, he's dead? No, oh, no, he's still alive. I'm not dead yet.
Now he's dead. Yes, I know Rodan's not dead yet, but... Again, watching this for the first time, you wouldn't think that. Okay, so somebody said that Rodan... This Rodan's actually bigger than... The Showa one. Uh, according to Toho Kingdom, Rodan in the Showa era is 50 meters tall with a wingspan of at maximum 150 meters. In this movie, 70 meters, but 70 meters is still bigger, but the wingspan is smaller. So, I. I Rodan's still smaller. <laughs> like he might he might be taller when he stands up, but the wingspan's not not that much bigger. Oh my god, you freaking dork. He's got a plush Rod uh Pteranodon. And, and, and uh, Pteranodon hanging from his rearview mirror. I think I had that Pteranodon as a kid. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. L look, this this says a lot coming from somebody who's a big dinosaur nut and I think most people who became who came into Godzilla Started out as dinosaur nuts, but at least like you gotta have like a really sp like okay. I don't know if like you you have you've achieved an extra level of nerdiness if you're just a nerd if you're just a fan of one specific prehistoric reptile. Like a pteranodon's not even a dinosaur. Not to mention that he left his job just to take pictures of an egg. So he better haul his ass back to G-Force. Wow. Smooth. <laughs> Okay, here's something I just found out. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, so he's... He ditched his job, and now he's a thief. Wow. Who... Who... In the world... Gave, uh, gave G Force that letter of recommendation. Whatever. Uh, here's something interesting I just or that I found out uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, the begin beginning of the movie, the two engineers that are observing. I think I'm correct on this. The two engineers that are observing Mechagodzilla and then go to see Garuda. Uh, the woman is played by Shinobu Nakayama, who you might, people might know more as, uh, as one of the main characters from Gamera, Guardian of the Universe, and Revenge of Iris, There's Mickey. Just want to make sure I am.
just want to make sure I'm correct on this. Otherwise, I'm not going to like it. No, I am correct. There's the Mothra twins or Cosmos. There's, uh, I forget the actor's name, but from the lead from King Kong versus Godzilla. Let me look him up. Yeah, that was Tadayo Takashima. Taka, Tadayo Takashima. And uh, the lead in this movie is his son, uh, Masahiro Takashima. Or Flo, those aren't actually the Cosmos, but those are the same actresses that played the Cosmos in the last movie. Oh yeah, another thing about Mickey in this movie. She's not a back she's not an afterthought like Godzilla. Like this I think this is the movie where um Yeah, this is the movie where Megumi Odaka actually has something to do this time around. You know, you'd think after that huge explosion, like of computers breaking and glass shattering, that somebody would have rushed in here immediately. <laughs> I like how Baby Godzilla just punched the shell. I like how they uh, they paint Baby Godzilla's introduction as horrifying. Like you don't really get a good like you get like glimpses of Baby Godzilla, and if Akube sells you on the fact that. This is this could be a horror movie scenario. You mean y'all didn't hear that big explosion? Yeah, that's not a good first impression. I do find it funny. Like, I'm pretty sure Minya, uh, Minya, might as well be Minya. Uh, G Baby Godzilla. I don't know why that was so hard to remember. Um... I think it's weird how baby Godzilla like starts off human sized. Like wouldn't baby Godzilla just be like, like 
we can assume that Godzilla did not, like, give birth to this egg. So, that must be, like, whoever gave birth to the egg, that must have been the least painful way to just lay the egg. And, and the animatronic for Baby Godzilla is very articulate. And... But enough cutesiness. Uh, Daddy's very angry. Again, like... Godzilla could have been just minding his own business, but because that egg had to be taken away, and he heard Baby Godzilla's cries, that's the only reason he even showed up to Japan, huh? You know, all these people running f uh, from Godzilla destroying a refinery are not as, don't look as panicked as I would be. I that, that moment right there is my favorite um, unintentionally funny out of context clip for a Godzilla movie in the dub. What's that? Godzilla's attacking the city. Again, these people are going to war against a giant monster. There's no need to learn martial arts in that case. Yeah, that's obviously not real. We just went into Tron for a second. Uh, Razorbike says, I mean, great whites as big as they can get are born only a couple inches long. So it's not completely out there. Uh, great whites don't get as big as Godzilla. So I don't think, I don't think that's the same thing. This theme is so cool. One big thing about, um, one big bummer that I, that just, Honestly, just th came up in my mind. Mm. Is that the Showa, like, the Showa and Heisei series introduced concepts that would be, introduced concepts in the series that would be prominent in other forms of media. Like, the Showa series introduced Monster Island. And the Heisei series introduced G-Force. But... The Millennium series didn't really introduce anything, any, like, type of concept, like, location or organization that would pop up in any other form of media. I mean, yeah, there'd be other giant monsters that the Millennium series would introduce, but, like, nothing as longstanding as Monster Island or G-Force,
Oh, you could clearly see the strings on Mechagodzilla. Also, I gotta be honest, I hate the way this Mechagodzilla look when he... I hate the way Mechagodzilla looks when he flies in this movie. Like, I'm sorry. That, like... Mechagodzilla flying in this movie has never looked good. Oh, now Godzilla encounters some electrical towers that are as tall as him. Oh, what, at what point did you people decide to run? Oh, so it's Japanese NASCAR instead... Instead, it's just everyone watching people turn right for God knows how long. You know, I they they could have made Mechagodzilla flying look cooler in this movie. You know, I probably shouldn't be asking any questions, but, um, okay, here's the thing. The original Mechagodzilla and Kiryu all have some form of artificial intelligence, whether, like, the original Mechagodzilla has an actual AI built into him, or Kiryu is built around the bones of the original Godzilla, this Mechagodzilla, who, who was the, since this Mechagodzilla has no artificial intelligence and is fully, like, controlled by humanity, who was the scientist that inserted the option for Mechagodzilla to roar? Like, I think that would not have been a priority. There's the only time Mechagodzilla, this Mechagodzilla uses laser eye cannons. Okay, why did... Again, maybe I'm thinking about this too hard, but why are they calling um, Mechagodzilla's chest cannon, or stomach cannon, I'm sorry, uh, plasma grenade? That's, that's not really a grenade. That's a cannon. It was added in post-production when the scientists realized it needed to sound threatening. It's not really a threatening roar, though. Well, yeah, in the Pipeworks games, uh, Destroy All Monsters, Melee, Save the Earth, and Unleashed, Mechagodzilla did use laser eyes because they made it, like, well, it was based off the model of um, well, it was based off the model of this Mechagodzilla. 
um, they still used aspects of the Showa Mechagodzilla. For example, this Mechagodzilla doesn't shoot missiles at his fingers. He shoots missiles out of his shoulders and hip. Man, how would, like, you got to, like, put yourself into G-Force's position right now. Like, you've got Godzilla on the ground. And you, you are, like, on the verge of finally getting rid of him once and for all. It's like, oh, my God. We, we developed a weapon that actually can not only take out Godzilla, but is practically inv invincible against Godzilla. Like, you must be on top of the world. And then this happens. Like, all of a sudden, who knows how, Godzilla managed to reverse the anchors the shock anchors back to Mechagodzilla and disable him. Godzilla uses the power of Deus Ex Machina. Or, or more like, um, I mean, there's a, there's a, this movie kind of has a Deus Ex Machina ending, which we'll get to later, but I think it's more the equivalent of, um, like how the internet's excuse for why Batman's good at everything is because he's Batman. It could be one of these things like, why is Godzilla so hard to kill or defeat? Because he's Godzilla. But yeah, Mechagodzilla was disabled and all it took from Godzilla was just a push. Like, he didn't even hit Godzilla. He didn't even hit Mechagodzilla that hard. Like, he, it's almost like he lightly tapped Mechagodzilla and he collapsed. I like this Godzilla um, ha uh, animatronic head. Huh? All right, folks, uh, can you guys hear me, or am I like cutting out at any point? Because I know this isn't this isn't a video feed, but I just want to make sure everything's good. Because on my end, uh, it says my stream status is poor. So I want to, I just want to get a survey from you guys to see if I, at any point, like, had a hiccup or, like, or, um, or if I've been, like, cutting in or out. You can hear you clearly. No, you're fine. Okay, good. I guess that's one advantage of not having video on this stream. Is that um, even though it says stream status poor, uh, nothing seems to be going wrong. You know, you got to give GeForce props. Their ultimate weapon was just taken out, but they still send everything they got to take, try to take out Godzilla, even though by this point they should know this shit doesn't work. <laughs>
Yeah, I like how um, Godzilla just casually kicks those tanks right before um, blasting the the rest of the tanks and the lasers with um, his atomic breath. Then he's just going to go about his way again. I don't know who Zuko is. So has Godzilla ever attacked Kyoto prior to this movie? Wait, explosions and massive fires all over the place. Um, Kyoto seems to be doing all right so far. From, okay, now, wait. Okay, now I feel, wait. Yeah, because Zuko, I'm pretty sure in Avatar, does not transform into anything. Oh, there was one guy. There was one guy running away that was smiling. This is the first time. Okay, so this is the first time Godzilla has actually attacked Kyoto. Here's my question. Um, what were they like when in between Mickey realizing that Godzilla has hit Japan and now what were they doing this whole time? Like, were they just standing in the room with the baby doing nothing? Okay, it's actually, I've started rewatching Avatar The Last Airbender on Netflix, uh, but was there a point where uh, Zuko transformed into anything? Okay, I, like, personally, I think it's kind of pointless to compare the Heisei Godzilla suits. I mean, with the exception of the Return of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Destroyer, because those are the ones that are drastically different. But, like, a lot of the suits from Biollante to Space Godzilla don't really have that much in terms of like actual differences so it's kind of point it's kind of pointless personally for me to compare them but this one that being said with the minor changes that this suit has compared to the others this is probably my favorite of the Heisei Godzilla suits
Well, he's slowly taking his time walking away. I won't say he's gone away completely. Godzilla left to Osaka Bay. Now he's gonna get his verb his ass verbally handed. You know, he, he, uh, this guy's like an ass because, like, he scolds him for using his vacation days early and then is like, hey, don't worry about it. Uh, oh, by the way, you're getting transferred to be uh, working in the parking lot. I mean, like, it would. I, I, if I were in his position, it would, it would, like, suck to be transferred to the. Like, he knew the job was dangerous when he took it. Like, you are employed to possibly the most, one of the highest, like, military areas in Japan. You screw it up on day one. Like, of course, you should get transferred to the parking lot. But at the very least, I'd be like, well, at least I still have a job. Yeah, that demotion was... Like, he had that demotion coming. Who... Who's... Who's in charge of Garuda security? Because... Like, nobody has clear... Like, people have clearly not been aware that um, Aoki just snuck into Garuda. So I guess the reasoning he keeps getting into Garuda is because I guess he was involved with Garuda originally. I, I don't know, but.
Oh, that that scientist is not one of the worst um, English speaking actors in a Godzilla movie, but he's still pretty bad. Huh? I mean, to be fair, that like little moment we saw, that wasn't even supposed to be like real life. That was supposed to be a computer simulation. So, so I can't real. I could give them a pass in the CGI. Wow, that was fast. What a dork. Like, as I've gotten older, I've learned to, like, not shy away from my fandoms. But there's some shit that you put away in the closet. Uh. Like, I, I, I would guarantee you that if you had... Uh, I don't... I actually don't know. Like... If you had, like, a giant pteranodon, like, robot uh, that you tried to impress a girl with, uh, chances are you're probably going to get shot down. But I think the added notion of it flying might actually be in your favor. Like, I think you might actually get some points from her if, uh, if you take her flying. Our flow says, I could understand if he was a paleontologist, but he's a military personnel. Hey, look, we all have our weird hobbies. Ah, crap. Okay, they didn't land that hard. It's all good. They're all fine here now. Thank you. Yeah, baby Godzilla looks so drunk in most of these shots. I love how all these little girls just suddenly, their singing voices sound more like grown women.
Oh yeah, remember I'm in this movie? Our flow says it's weird they call him baby when there's a Japanese word for baby. I think the reason I think the reason is because there's um I think it's for marketing purposes cuz all the monsters that Toho's names can easily be translated um in America and not sound that different. So I think for marketing purposes, it's just easier for them to call Baby Godzilla Baby instead of whatever the Japanese name for it is. And now we get Fire Rodan because Koichi Kawakita loves his beam attacks. So again, like Mickey in the last few movies, in the first two movies she was in, she always seemed like more of a plot device. Like she, she was just there to kind of know where Godzilla was. And she was just used to help the other characters. And then in the last movie, she's a total afterthought. This movie, she's actually a character where she has doubts about trying to get rid of Godzilla. And I like that.
There's nothing that could possibly go wrong with her in the crate with a telepathic baby dinosaur. Baby Godzilla really is like a little dog. Kenji Sahara is having PTSD with Rodan right now. <laughs> for those of you who don't get, for those of you who don't understand that joke, um, Kenji Sahara was the lead in the original Rodan. It is very like Rodan has just gotten the ability. Like, not only has he just gotten the ability to fire uranium beams now but he's got a new um red look but he still has the courtesy to not like radiate an entire city just fly over them and cause explosions oh so a black wolf asked that was sarcasm, wasn't it? I think, too, having um, the scientist be with Baby during that trip. Um, uh, yeah, it was. Boom! You know, baby, the two of them should be like floating in the air as that crate's free falling. Like, I think that was supposed to be um, Shinobu Nakayama from the first and third Gamma movies. So Rodan's going to blow up a bridge. But he's going to have the decency to not blow up Tokyo Disneyland. You know, what a missed opportunity. Like, I mean, I'm sure, like, now in 2020, Disney would not allow that. But what a missed opportunity to build, like, not only build a model of Tokyo Disneyland to destroy, but to have that be um, where the climax of the film takes place. Huh? I mean, I imagine they couldn't... I mean, I imagine uh, they couldn't have the climax of the movie take place there because, you know, screen time. But to destroy it, like to build a model and destroy it, what a missed opportunity. There we go with Mechagodzilla again. So now we get we the audience get to finally see what this hunk of junk does.
So did Garuda just come out of the same hangar as Mechagodzilla? Does it look like it? Private Richard Johnson, you will pick up this intercom right now. <laughs> I was four years old right there. <laughs> you know, uh, Elky's helmet said A. Johnson. Uh, that's It's kind of ironic that in 2014, Aaron Taylor Johnson would pop up in a Godzilla movie. I love how Rodan, like the, Rodan has been flying around since daytime has not once landed until now. How would it, how would it be poetic to see uh, Tokyo Disneyland get destroyed? Oh, I've heard of Nara Dreamland. I think I saw, like, Theme Park Review made a video on it, and it is... Wow. Yeah, it's Nara Dreamland. For those of you who don't know what it is, it is a blatant, and I mean blatant, Disneyland ripoff. Like, right to the point where they have, like, a discount uh, Matterhorn Mountain. Which no other Disneyland park has. After seeing Disney ruined both Marvel and Star Wars. Okay, you, I'm not... I cannot get on board with that. I do not agree with that in the slightest. Like, I... Again, I do not disagree. I do not... I do not agree with that statement. That... That Disney ruined... I, Star Wars... I don't agree at all and Marvel I don't know how anyone could say that Disney ruined Marvel and plus that like even if I did agree with you Rodan destroying Tokyo Disneyland is not really poetic Like there's nothing there's nothing really poetic about that at all. So Garuda can shoot lasers. Who would have guessed? Dead.
Again, why do they call that thing a grenade? It's a cannon. Miraculously, he survived. But uh, nothing seems to be working. Um, Razorbike says, this week was supposed to be my family's yearly Orlando trip. Well, I mean, s given that Florida is downright stupid with... Um, how they're handling this pandemic. Uh, all of their theme parks are open, but it's probably good that nobody goes to them. Because, again, cases would go down if people stayed away from social gatherings or theme parks. Oh, you weren't even using those laser cannons anyway. Not a big deal. I, okay, people have been talking about Mecha Godzilla being Godzilla vs. Kong. I have not bothered to read any of the leaks. Um, but if Mecha Godzilla really is in that movie, I think, I think that's a mistake. I think it's a mistake to put Mecha Godzilla in that movie. Like, I, again, that's just me. I haven't read any of the leaks, but, um, but I, I think it's a mis I think it would be a t bad move to put Mecha Godzilla in. I mean, again, this is all theory. But if they like, if they execute Godzilla Mecha Godzilla well in Godzilla vs Kong, then it could work. But just the idea of Mecha Godzilla being in that movie doesn't sit well with me. And if if Mecha Godzilla is in that movie. I would want a completely original theme. I don't want a combination of all the other Mechagodzilla themes, because then it's just a... Then it's just an ugly mishmash. Huh? Instead of something, like, original. But hey, Godzilla's back. With Nara Dreamland, Kunizo Matsuo, the manager, met with Walt Disney about bringing Disney to Japan, and that park was the result. Oh, wow. I did not know that. Yeah, y'all remember what happened to Super X2? You kept abusing uh, that fire mirror weapon so much that it overheated and that led to your downfall. So you got to conserve your plasma energy. There's that... Uh, Beam lock on. Which I, for the longest time, I don't know why, um, I don't know why up until Final Wars, that little thing was so exclusive to Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla. I never quite understood that.
There's uh, the music from. There's the music from Mothra versus Godzilla. Okay, Mecha Godzilla's at least standing up. Oh, now he's in trouble. Yeah, Mecha Godzilla's in trouble now. And wow, that looks so unconvincing. Sit your ass down. <laughs> Godzilla like legit curb stomped Mecha Godzilla up until he started whacking him with his tail. Yeah, you didn't hear all that commotion and Godzilla's roar? So iron so convenient that he got Garuda back up and running just as he was asked for help. Okay, you'll you'll want to talk about um you'll want to talk about something poetic. Uh the commander of Mecha Godzilla disapproves of Aoki. Uh, demotes him to parking lot attendant after he ditches his job only to suddenly be saved by Aoki when Mecha Godzilla was down. That's what you call poetic. <laughs> Razorbike says, you know what people going to theme parks in Orlando remind me of? They remind me of the 4th of July celebration in Jaws. When they think the problem is over, but it's not. And just comes and bites them in the ass. Yeah, except like, in both scenarios, they acknowledge the problem. Like, like the governor of Florida and the mayor in Jaws... They're both like, we will be open, but you do whatever you ha but you scientists or uh, safety personnel do whatever you have to do to make sure everything's safe, but we will be open. Um, but at the very least, um, what was I going to say? At the very least, um, Mayor Vaughn has the dignity, uh, yeah, Mayor Vaughn in Jaws has the dignity to realize that he goofed. Whereas, as far as I know, the mayor, the governor of Florida is not doing anything. Now we got Super Mecha Godzilla.
they didn't they did not nail uh mecha godzilla flying in this movie I mean, right here when he's flying slowly, I can believe it. But a little, like, back there when he was flying, moving pretty quickly with Garud on his back. I don't know. Wait, Dan Slot. Uh Wait, what? What's so significant about? You know what? I'm not even going to acknowledge that. I'm not even going to qu ask that. So they got paralyzer missiles and tranquilizer missiles. Right, I I actually like all the beams. It's funny that Kochi Kawakita gets so. Um, one of the biggest criticisms towards his special effects work is so many laser beams, but I don't know. I like them. Dan Slot. Oh, he wrote. Oh, okay. Yeah, one more day. Um, yeah, I I hate that storyline as well, but that's n like I hate one more day as well. But that's that's not that's not for that's not worthy to some to wish some like somebody to get coronavirus over. Like no, like I like that's. Okay, let's actually see who wrote one more day. Yeah? This this whole this whole stream is full of nerds, including myself. Uh, so, um, okay, one more day was written by. Not written by. Yeah, not written by Dan Slott. Uh, One More Day was written by J. Michael Straczynski and Joe Cassanda. Which again, I hate One More I hate One More Day, but I'm not that's not enough for me to like wish somebody to get coronavirus. Yeah, Dan Slott, again, I'm not, I am not encouraging this on my channel. Like, this, this kind of talk of, I wish somebody would get coronavirus. I'm not going to allow this on my channel at all. Uh, but for clarification, Dan Slott is the current writer for Fantastic Four and Iron Man 2020. This is according to his Twitter. He also did runs for Silver Surfer, Amazing Spider-Man, and She-Hulk. And his his Twitter says, please wear masks. So, yeah, I don't know where that came from. But, yeah, I, I will not tolerate um, wishing people would get coronavirus because enough we've enough people have died from the virus and enough people have gotten them. Yeah, so this situation here, um, like, you just, you killed Godzilla. Like, like, officially, like, Godzilla is officially down for the count. Or I guess in this case, Godzilla's just paralyzed. Uh, 
Yeah, at this point, like, Godzilla's completely paralyzed. And it's like, wow, like, nearly 40 years, and we finally got him. Even though Godzilla, in this continuity, has been absent for 30 years. All right, this part right here, uh, it's like that Simpsons uh, clip. Uh, we're like, yeah, this part coming up. Yeah, I'm just reminded of the Simpsons where it's like, stop it. He's already dead. Now, if I'm correct, uh, people could correct me on this. The original ending was that Godzilla was actually supposed to die here. If I'm correct, I think the original ending for this movie was that Godzilla was legitimately supposed to die because this was around the time that uh, Sony and TriStar had gotten the rights to make an American Godzilla movie. And Toho was just trying to end the series so the American Godzilla could get underway. But again, like, let me see, let me see if that's actually correct. Because I think I remember seeing that. Okay, yeah. Um, this is this comes from an early draft of Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Um, the original ending of the film in, in the original ending of the film Godzilla destroys Garuda but is killed by Mecha Godzilla. Garuda's nuclear reactor explodes and resurrects the king of the monsters. Another ending was considered in which Godzilla's escaping life force mutates baby Godzilla into a new adult Godzilla. Okay, so yeah, that's that's accurate. And this is kind of a uh, kind of a Deus Ex Machina ending that Rodan is still alive and manages to resurrect Godzilla by sacrificing himself. Our flow says, oh, God, are we doing the American one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you guys haven't. But the thing is, like two weeks ago, I did another. I was invited on another watch along. Um, of the American Godzilla. So I recently saw that movie and I have to. Be for for everyone here, and because I already made the promise, I have to watch that movie all over again. So, trust me. Like, tr if there's anybody who is not looking forward to rewatching Roland Emmerich's Godzilla again, it's probably me, since I just rewatched it two weeks ago. Oh yeah, this part. This like, y'all screwed now. Yeah, I love it. Um, the first, like, Godzilla King of the Monsters, the, the American poster for that original version was supposed, like, Godzilla, sh it showed Godzilla breathing fire. And for the longest time, like, it was thought that Godzilla breathed fire up until uh, King Kong versus Godzilla, since that was the first movie in color. And only now does Godzilla... 
Yeah, only now does Godzilla actually breathe red atomic breath. Still not fire, but at least it's red. Okay, yeah, Mecha Godzilla's not getting out of this. <laughs> You know, that, this would it would have been dark if um, the Mecha Godzilla crew was actually killed, but no, you see their escape pod flying off right there, huh? like right there. You see the pod flying away as Mecha Godzilla blows up, but um, sorry, I'm just listening to the Ifa Kube score, but yeah. Again, it would have been so dark and bold if they actually killed the Mechagodzilla crew. But again, like, Mickey was on there, so you can't kill her. Especially since this is the first movie where she's actually a character. You know, that, that shot um, where the computer says emergency escape system activated... That should have come earlier, before we saw the escape pod eject and before Mechagodzilla was destroyed. Miraculously, no one was killed. Like, like, and they, I love it, like, they nearly died by Godzilla destroying Mechagodzilla. Like, like, utterly destroying Mechagodzilla to oblivion. And then, um, and they all walk out like it's nothing. Um... No, I have not seen uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, but I know Hideaki Anno created that show, and I've seen a lot of comparisons between that series and Shin Godzilla to where it's like, oh yeah, I can tell that these two are made by the same people, or made by the same guy. But no, I have not seen uh, Evangelion. I just... Anime is not really a top priority for me. Again, it's like, it's like, I don't have anything against anime at all. It's just with all my other fandoms out there, I just don't have time for anime. Like I've already just gotten into, um, I've been a DC, I've been into DC stuff for, for as long as I can remember. Not a hardcore fan, but only now have I started getting into um, the DC animated movies. Which, by the way, um, I'm not going to say what the review is, but I'm not going to say what the movie is. But tomorrow is going to be um, the review, a review of the first DC animated movie that I've decided to watch. It's weird how Baby Godzilla's theme is so... Like, Minya's theme was so goofy. Like, whether it was Masato Sato or the composer for All Monsters Attack, but Ifakube's theme for Baby Godzilla is more, like, tragic than anything. And then they just leave him there looking all pathetic. I do find it hilarious. I really find it hilarious how massive 
Godzilla is and how tiny baby Godzilla is when they're standing next to each other. <laughs> they obviously sped up the footage there. Again, it's a miracle that um, that they all walked out of it perfectly. <laughs> like they all walked out of the crash without getting burnt, without a broken bone in their bodies, without any concussions. Like, <laughs> like bravo for them. <laughs> It's I still it still cracks me up. Like this is a tender moment, I know, but it still makes me laugh how tiny baby Godzilla is compared to Godzilla. So yeah, it's like right now Godzilla has no reason at all to attack Japan. Like Godzilla now has an offspring, so just head back to the ocean. It's a shame this series never had its own monster island. That's a good composite shot there of baby Godzilla walking on the beach. Then it pans up to um, Godzilla in the ocean. Although now that I'm looking at it, like the, the perspective's kind of off. Whatever. Wait, you mean you could have understand us in Japanese the whole time? I I may, I was in charge of this Mecha Godzilla program the whole time and spoke the entire time in English so you could understand it. And all of a sudden you understand us in Japanese? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh Razorbike says life uh finds a way which uh it should be noted that Jurassic Park came out 6 months before this movie came out so uh that's that's ironic versus is that um is that that movie uh is that that Japanese movie from Ryuhei Kitamura who directed Final Wars? So I feel like I've heard of it, but I've never actually seen it. Now, unlike... Um, yeah, for some reason, uh, when this movie came out on DVD in 2004... 2005, I think... Uh, they didn't have. They didn't include the credits at the end of it. They just. Um, they just cut straight to black as the music played out a bit. But for these Blu-rays with Mechagodzilla two and 
Space Godzilla and Destroya, they insert the credits, which... I oh, don't know, I'm fine. I need to get to hear more of Ifakube's score. So yeah, this was um, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Definitely better than the last one, in my opinion. And uh, this Thursday, we are going to do the most controversial movie of the second series for reasons that I personally don't fully understand. Uh, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. I've never... Again, I, I've talked about this in my review. I never understood why um, that movie in the Heisei series is so ill-regarded. When, honestly, I think... Uh, I thought Godzilla vs. Mothra was worse. First assistant director, uh, Kenji Suzuki, uh, who would take over spe as special effects director for Rebirth of Mothra 3, Godzilla 2000, and Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. Uh, but yeah, we'll be doing Space Godzilla on uh, Thursday. Like I said before, um, since I'm house-sitting, I am not going to be on camera, but I will have a review up tomorrow for whichever DC animated movie that I've selected to review. Uh, I know what it is, and I've already watched it, but y'all don't know what it is. So... Um, yeah, just keep your eyes open for that tomorrow. Uh, Black Wolf 249 says, yes, I'm talking about that versus. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know when I'm going to see that. I don't know. I don't know if it's on Netflix or on any other streaming service. But I did see his other movie prior to uh, him doing Final Wars. Uh, Sky High, who had, um, which starred, um, Yumiko Shaku, who was in Godzilla versus Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. So I've seen a lot, no, 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 not a lot, a Sky High. Uh, I've not seen verses, but from what what it from what I'm reading, uh, independent zombie action movie. Uh, that sounds that sounds like something right up my alley. So I will de whenever I get a shot, I will definitely um, check it out. But yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, for those of you who had just joined us in the chat, uh, sorry, we just finished the movie, but again, like you can watch this in post, uh, this Thursday will be Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, and if you like what I'm doing with the channel and you want to help support financially, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash the real Mr. Robinson, and, um, if you help with the, um, if you help support the channel through Patreon uh, for only $1 a month, uh, once we get to a certain amount of patrons, I could start doing uh, exclusive watch-alongs for other movies because during this pandemic, I've said this before, during this pandemic, I am only doing the Godzilla series and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And if we get up to... Let me see. If we get up to 25 patrons, I will start doing live watch-alongs more often, and again, for $1 a month. If you cannot help support the channel financially, no sweat. That is totally fine. Just subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share me with your friends. Tell them about me and these videos. And uh, yeah. Yeah, any amount you can do to help spread the word or support this channel is uh, well appreciated. And until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.